So in fact, now you can see this is a very powerful principle because let us go back to our original network. Yeah. We tried a whole bunch of you know, voltages, Correct. input voltages. Correct. Right. And we saw various output voltages. voltages. Yes. In fact, now what this tells you is that you can actually break this down into individual inputs being applied. So now you imagine okay. x1 was v1, yeah. x2 was v2. Yes. Those are the two inputs that are being applied. Yeah. Now you can find out the individual outputs when x1 is applied, that is v1 is applied. When x2 is applied, that is v2 is applied, you combine the two, in this case additively, yeah. the output is additive. Oh, so any linear combination of these two as inputs, you can find out based on the individual outputs that you measured. That is right. Wow. So that is exactly what this uh, superposition principle Super says. Is. Okay. So what this is telling you is that uh, you can now, if you have many inputs, yeah. If the network is linear, you can just take each one separately and analyze the network and the final one will be just a combination of oh. all of the individual outputs. Okay, so I don't have to do like complicated mesh analysis with all the voltage sources together and all that. That is right. Okay. So, so yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead. I so just, I'm just show starting me, to draw it. Show me how, you know, you can actually solve it for the example that we had. Yes, I, think I'm, I'm I just thought see. while uh, uh, you are pointing out the really salient points, I thought I'll redraw that network instead Absolutely. of going back. Absolutely. Right. So this was V1, V2 and now maybe we can just go for R1, R2 yeah. or um, which would you prefer? Would you just prefer to have abstract quantities? No, or let's keep it as R1 or R2 because we can link this to the last, uh, the lecture that we did to the mixer. Right? With the mixer uh, as so well. So that the expressions match. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Right. So now we are actually interested in this voltage Vx, Vx across R3. Yeah. So now what superposition is telling you yes. is uh, the output Vx yeah. has two components. Right. One component when only V1 is applied. Yeah. Okay. And another component, so I'll call that Vx1. Okay. And you so, have a second component Vx2 when only V2 is applied. So when you mean only V2 is applied, it means V1 is 0. V1 is 0 and that means we saw it's replaced by a wire. By wire, short circuit. Short circuited. Okay, great. Okay. So in fact, by definition, if you say that a voltage source is not existent or removed, you replace it with a 0 volt, which is a wire. Which is wire, yeah, correct. Okay. So if you do this, what it says, if you find out Vx1 and Vx2, the resultant voltage Vx, when you apply V1 and V2, V2 together, together, so will just be Vx equals Vx1 plus Vx2. Oh, wow. Okay. Now you can see how powerful this is. Exactly. Because we are looking at an extremely simple network. Now you imagine I had like, you know, the case of the mixer you were talking about. Exactly. 64 channel mixer, 64 right? Channel 64 mixer. additive sources. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's right. Oh, okay. great. So, um, maybe what we'll do. Uh, we will analyze this network, yeah, right, by applying each one separately. Yes, and find out the total one. Absolutely. We'll also and maybe uh, do the mesh analysis with both V1 and V2 there, V2. and show that the result is the same. It's the same, exactly. Right? So maybe um, <clears throat> we will. Uh, which one shall we do first? Do you want to do the individual Vx1, Vx2 first? Because yes. we have already done, you know, yes, the yes. total we have analysis. Done the total. Mesh. So let's start with the individual ones. The like individual ones. So I'll redraw the network on the next page. Yeah. So what I will do, I will just remove V1 for this step. Yes. In fact, that will correlate well with the situation where we set V2 to be 0 volts. Correct. So you are saying you will remove V2. I will remove V2. Ah. So I am just going to have V1. Yeah. R1, so I have R2, R2 and R3. R3. Right? R3. Correct. Right. So now, I can now, I am interested in this voltage. Yeah. So. That okay. is Vx1, right? By definition, yes. We have actually done this before. We have done this before. So we did R2 parallel R3. R2 parallel and R3. And then the voltage divider between R1 and that combination. That's correct. Right? Maybe we can just write down the expression. We can write down very that close to it. Right. So what we will do? So we said Vx1. We said there was a voltage division. Yes. Right. So we saw. Let maybe I'll go back to that page so that yeah. students uh, remember that because we did the case when this was zero. There you go. Yeah. Right. right. 
what we did we first found out the equivalent resistance yes then what we did we went to the we did a voltage we found out the current voltage divided. and then we found out that it was simply this resistance divided over the, the sum, sum of the resistors Correct. that's what we found out by fixing it right yes. so we will use that same principle we in fact we will just write down that yeah right yeah okay the next page i guess yeah yes correct okay so this vx1 yes we will just write it so you first generate a network with just r2 parallel r3 yes that is the equivalent resistance so i'll just call mm. this r equivalent yeah just a single resistance which is r2 times r3 by r2 plus r3 r3 yeah that is right. the parallel Correct. combination of two resistors and then the voltage vx1 yeah is nothing but r equivalent yes by r1 plus r, r equivalent, equivalent yeah times v1 yeah absolutely okay yes and uh, in fact if we want to write it in terms of this so this will simply be r2 r3 by r2 r3 plus so, yeah. r1 r2 plus R one, R three. I am yeah. just writing out R equivalent in here. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know, <laughs> if if you want to relate it to the mixer expression we derived, yes. why don't we deal with one by R equivalent in this? Sure, right? it sure. It might be a little easier for us to do that. That's right. Okay, we will <coughs> do that. So one by R equivalent. So you want to write this in terms of one by R equivalent? Yes. Perfect. We'll so, do that. Yeah, we'll do that. So we, I'll write it here. Yes. So this would basically be uh, V one. So V X one yeah. is V one. By one plus R one by R equivalent. Yes, and right? one by R equivalent is just one by R two plus one by R three. That is correct, right? Yeah. Okay. So we we know what this V X one is yeah. in this case. Okay. Now we want to do the second step where we have V two, but not V one. Not V one. Right. So this was R one, R two, R two, V two, and R three. R three. Yeah. And this was V X two. <coughs> Correct. Okay. We have de-energized V one. Yes. We have put in V two. Yes. <coughs> Now the network looks exactly the same. It yeah. just looks like it's redrawn. Yes. Right. So we had R two drawn in the middle, whereas here we have uh, R one drawn to the left. Yeah, that's all. But it's just redrawing the network. These are all, uh, uh, you know, the network looks exactly the same. Same. So in fact, we can write this as uh, first we'll write. Maybe I'll call this R equivalent uh, prime. Yes. Right. Is simply R one parallel R three. Yeah. So R one, R three by R one plus R three. Yes. And once we do that, we know that V X two. Yeah. Is simply R equivalent prime. Uh, I am doing writing it this way quickly because we have done it for the previous network. Correct. It is identical. So we'll just write it like this: R two plus R equivalent R prime. equivalent prime. And into, uh, into we should encourage the students if they are not able to get this step, they should just start from first principles. Yes. And analyze this network. Correct. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Times V two. Yeah. <coughs> And uh, we will write it in this form. We will say that it is V two by one plus R two by R equivalent prime. Correct. Right. It looks very similar. Exactly. The expression looks very similar. Exactly. Because I think we just had V one R one V two R two the networks. As far as the voltage sources are concerned, the rest of the networks looks very similar. Yeah. Right. Most. That's why we are getting this uh, expression. Yes. Now what we are saying is that if you actually put in both. So V X is V X one plus V X two. V X two. So this <coughs> is nothing but um, V one by one plus R two. Um, let me see. You should not make a mistake. R one. R one. R one by R equivalent. Yeah. Correct. Plus V two by one plus R two by R equivalent prime. Yes. Now I see the mixing. You see the mixing, right? Yes. In fact, I would say you pull out V one by R one and V two by R two. Correct. This will become one by R one. 
correct <coughs> given by r1 by <coughs> 1 by r1 plus plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 exactly right yeah perfect plus similarly e2 by, by r2, r2 by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus, plus 1 by r3, r3. Perfect, Janak Raman, this looks exactly like the mixer that we designed. Exactly, hmm? right? Great. So, the expressions match, but what you have now done is, even if I give you a mixer circuit with 64 channels, you just have to, you can just write this expression out easily, right? It just keep, it will go on adding as V3 by R3 by sum of all the conductances. That, that is, is 1 correct. by resistances. Correct. And so on. That's right. So, the, you can see how powerful this technique is. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Completely scalable. Yeah. And to, you know, a large number of, a very complicated network. Circuit. Yeah, absolutely. So, this is, this is wonderful. But I, but I had a question. You actually made an interesting point. I think I, you know, the resistor being linear is, I understand the relationship with linearity. But why should it pass through the origin? Good question. <clears throat> So, it turns out that you see this uh, homogeneity principle, Yeah. right? This automatically forces the characteristic to pass through the origin. Okay. So, only if the characteristic passes through the origin for a linear term, for a linear uh, y equals f of x. Yeah. Will it satisfy the homogeneity principle? Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say this network does, if I give an input x, I get x plus 2 as the output. Perfect. So, let us, very, okay. very good question. So, let us try that experiment. So, this network n, some, yeah. if I give input x, okay. so it gives you y equals x plus 2. It's just a DC offset of that. Correct. Input voltage, right? That's, That's right. All. Great. Okay. I want to find out whether this is. Uh, I mean, this appears linear to this me. This appears what? linear. In fact, it is a straight line. You're just adding. It's a straight line. You're just adding a bias to it. Right? That's right. What is this? That's right. Yeah. So it, except that it doesn't pass through the origin. I know. This, so right? I don't. I, I don't. Don't see the need for that. Perfect. That, so let us that see. rider so that you added. It does something like this. Yeah. So it uh, when x is equal to zero, y is two, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's a straight line. Yeah. It is linear. It is That's linear. Think, right. Yes. It is linear. Yes. Okay. So, let us see whether it uh, satisfies yeah, homogeneity absolutely. principle. So, I am going to give it uh, input as a times x. a times x. Okay. a times x. Yeah. So, the output <coughs> y yeah. is uh, a x plus 2. Yeah. Right? Yes. What did I expect for a network satisfying homogeneity? I wanted, right? Okay. What did I want? You wanted? A, a into x plus 2 to a be the to x plus f 2. of a x equal to a times f of x. Exactly. We wanted a into mm. x plus 2. This okay. is what we wanted. Okay. Okay. For homogeneity. Yeah. But we are getting a x plus 2. Correct. It is not scaling with 2a. It is not It is not. You do not have that 2a term. Okay. Okay. Now, to, this is why even though the network is linear, yes. it, ha, it is still not Superposition is still not valid. Valid. So oh. now you can see the requirement is an if and only if condition. Right. So it is linear only if it satisfies both homogeneity and additive additivity. Principle. Okay, 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 okay. I, 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 I get your point. So actually, this this equation x plus two will not even follow additivity, right? It won't even follow additivity. Right. If I give it won't. x it one, won't. I'll get x one plus two, <coughs> x two, x two plus two. If I add, I'll yeah. get x one plus x two plus four. Let's confirm that. Yeah. So I have, I take this network n. Yeah. Right. So we'll point out that uh, this does not follow homogeneity. Yeah. Okay. So let us try additive principle. So I give x one. Yeah. I get um, y one is x one plus two. Two. And well, I don't need to redraw it. I'll just draw it in a different color. color X2. X2. Y2 is X2 plus 2. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I gave X1 plus X2. Yes. Okay. Y3 I get. Uh, <clears throat> what I get is X1 plus X2 plus 2. X1 plus X2 plus 2. What I wanted. Wanted. Yeah. Right. For. 
additivity you wanted y1 plus y2 we want y1 plus y2 which is basically x1 plus x2 plus 4 oh so, so this it, so though it's linear this bias seems to be increasing you know 2 4 6 and so on and it's causing a problem that's correct that constant term 2 or whatever it might be is oh the is causing trouble is the culprit wow so okay. you can see to obey superposition it has to pass through the origin right in I fact understand. networks that satisfy uh, don't pass through the origin there is a specific name for them okay they are called affine networks not oh. linear they are called affine okay okay you say that the characteristics are affine yes so in mathematics, affine is what? Ax plus b kind of? Ax plus b kind of curve. Operation, right? That's okay, right. Okay, 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 okay. That's right. So, that's why it's called an affine. Okay, interesting. That's right. 